recording. Okay, and let's uh, welcome Eugene and Andre. Um, Eugene, are you there? Yes, we are here. Yeah. Just going to switch on the video. Okay, fantastic. Hello. How's it going, everybody? I'm Eugene, hey, everybody. and this is uh, Andre. How's it going? Nice to meet everybody. Hey, hello. Thank you so much for the last minute um, invitation acceptance. Uh, I and I'm, I almost kind of ran over time, so thanks for letting me know that I was running late. Um, I want to do a little bit of an intro to natural law and common law and what it what it's all about what it means um how how to think about it so if you could be our our, our initiator into into natural law give us a little bit of of beginning steps that would be amazing okay so i'm, I'm gonna try and do my best um <coughs> it's quite a tall task to uh, no. kind of take it and squash it into 15, 20 minutes, but I'm going to try and do my best. And I'm only going to try and take the basic stuff. Um, th there's a whole lot more to this. Um, I had a couple here this morning that started at nine. We finished at half past 12, obviously going into more detail, explaining the whole difference from common law, natural law. What's the difference between lawful and legal um, what rights do you have? Where do you derive your rights from? On what rights can you stand? Um, how do you protect your property? Um, what is included in your property? So uh, the, the spectrum is quite vast, but if, if you're not going to start at some point to prepare yourself for the onslaught of the system on you, then you're not going to have any framework or grounds that you're going to be stand on to um, at least protect yourself to give you a point where you can say, okay, listen, guys, stop. That's it. Um, so there's a difference between lawful and legal. Legal is the, the, the legal constructs that's been built in our minds, that statutes and acts, um, things written, anything written by man, anything made by man, that's legal. And that's called legalese. It's legal language. Um, then you have lawful. Lawful is where you derive like the session now natural natural law. what is natural it's 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 inherent it's not created by man um there's a higher truth to it it's not a truth that is relative it's not subjective it's an absolute if it, if it is relative then that means my truth versus andre's truth which truth is more applicable who's right and who's wrong well neither because both have a right to determine what is truth and what is not truth so mm -hmm. if you're going to look in terms of what's happening in the world around us and uh, look at what they are doing and what they are trying to force upon us if you feel that what they are doing is wrong then that feeling and that thought is from somewhere else than from inside yourself uh, they believe what they are doing is right, and they believe what they have a right to do what they do. But if there's an absolute law, if there's an absolute truth that stipulates you will cause no damage, injury, loss, or harm to your fellow man, and that we are all equal under that requirement, then I have a right to say what they are doing is wrong. So that's where natural law comes in. <laughs> and it's a basic principle that I have the freedom to do as I will, as I wish, but within a confinement, within boundary. That does not mean I can do what I want and then I injure Andre. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't extend that far. It's freedom to live my life as I choose within the confinements of not injuring my fellow man. Mm -hmm. So that's the basis of natural law. Then in terms of where we're standing today, there's so many people saying, but this is my right. This is my right. You know, it's, um, it's, it's constitutional right. Um, it's a um, uh, declaration of human rights from the United Nations. The problem that you've got is those documents are man-made. If you have a document that affords rights within that document, then that same document as it's stipulated that it can also suspend and withdraw those rights. But if it's natural law, 
if it was given by a divine decree at your birth, it's inherent, it's inside, then only the one that created you has the right to suspend or withdraw those rights. No other man has the right then to tell you, sorry, your rights are suspended. You have no right to freedom of thought, freedom of belief, freedom to informed consent. You have no right to freedom of movement. We are going to suspend those rights. So the difficulty comes in, and that's purely because of the, the effectiveness of the system and how it's built a prison in our minds. Because the only authority and the only power that the system has is derived from your brain, from your thinking, and from giving authority to that system. But when you realize that my rights are inherent, it's not derived from a document, it's not derived from a piece of paper, then I, I set myself apart. I stand on a different ground, completely different ground. Then the only way that the system can further on interact with you is contract. So what are the laws of contract? How does contractual agreements work? Contractual agreements work, there's an offer, there's consideration, there's terms and conditions, so performance, and there's acceptance. So that's the basis of a contract. Now, what has happened with the system to our disadvantage, and that's actually our own fault, the same way we never looked after our bodies, the same way we didn't live healthy and we didn't eat healthy, in the same way we didn't look after um, our minds and uh, how do we protect our property? Same thing. So it's built up a system of legislative statutes and acts where they say it's law, but it's not law. It's statutes and acts. And it's a contract. It's a contract of offer, once again, consideration, terms and conditions and acceptance. Now, on what grounds can you tell government that, listen, the statutes and acts that you are currently trying to enact doesn't apply to me? Because if I was to ask 99% of the people, then they, their answer would be no, but I mean, the government made that law, so I don't have a right to say no. I can't say no. So we have the Disaster Management Act, and the Disaster Management Act stipulates that I must stay at home, uh, I mustn't move around, I must uh, wear my mask, uh, I have, we have this dreaded pandemic going on and what we say, that's law. So my question is, do you have a right to say no or do you have to comply? Now, very few people actually believe they have a right to say no. And the question is, why do you believe you can't say no? If you can't say no, then that means one of two things. You're a subject and you're a slave. Because only subjects and slaves do not have the right to say no. If you believe that you do have a right to say no, then on what basis are you standing? Why do you believe that you have a right to say no? So, in short, the difference between common law, natural law, and legal is just your jurisdiction, knowing that common law Natural law, that's the laws of nature. That's applicable to all men. We are all equal, and it applies to everybody. That puts me under the jurisdiction. I don't want to go make it too super spiritual, um, but, I mean, this is my handbook. This is the handbook that I hold very strong to. Uh, that's the foundation that everything is built on, and um, I fall under that jurisdiction. And the rules and the regulations of men fall under that jurisdiction. And as a sovereign, um, I have a choice. I can partake and be part of the whole system for the greater good. Um, and, but when that system starts violating my inherent rights, then I have a right to say no. So we have the laws of our road, which aren't bad. It's actually good. It's good because why? It protects everybody using the road, pardon me, the road, the road system. I mean, if you're just going to have everybody not stopping at stop streets and not stopping at traffic lights, I mean, we're going to have quite a lot of accidents. So that's a good thing. It's not bad. But when they start using statutes and acts to violate something that they ought to protect, then you've got to know on what grounds you're going to stand. 
and how are you going to stop it? And that's the basis of common law. Um, I mean, it's this platform, I think it's called Lionsgate. I haven't done too much uh, research on it, but Revelation 5.5 actually talks about the line of Judah, the root of David, which is conquered. It's going to return. And everything is established and everything is built upon, once again, this foundation. It's, it's, not, a, it's not very difficult. Um, but I also realized in the last um, couple of weeks why there was such a tremendous onslaught, basically on this book, um, and also the, aware, the spiritual awareness of, of, of our being and why we are here and the purpose of man and what we ought to be doing. And the reason why there's been such an attack, a massive attack on this book to nullify it and bring it to nothing was because this book actually has the answers. Um, everything in life, everything that we deal with is based on commerce. Every single thing, the entire system, the entire matrix is built on commerce. And that entire system of commerce is based on the 1611 King James Version of the Bible. And if you knew that there are maxims in law written to execute and to bring about justice so that there's equity and fairness, but you don't regard this book as important, then you're never, ever going to find the remedy. You're never going to go to this book to find out on what grounds can I stay and stop this act of government towards me. So it's important to realize, uh, um, I mean, er and everybody to, to their own um, decisions mm -hmm. in life. Um, but yeah, common law, natural law, this book is extremely important because it actually gives the remedy and it actually gives you the tool and the notices and the liabilities. And on what grounds are you going to approach government to tell government, okay, Hawkeye, you know, you guys are overstepping your authority. It says in the constitution, and I don't derive my right from the constitution, but the constitution, the human declaration of uh, uh, human rights of the United Nation, the Nuremberg Code, all those things, all they do is they identify existing rights. They never afforded you those rights. They merely identified something that was inherent something that was given to you and to all humanity. And at once it's identified, it's there to protect. But we know that they've fallen short in this category and they haven't done that. Mm. So on what grounds? I go to that constitution and the constitution says, we the people give rise to who then rule by consent of the people. So a government is doing what it's doing because of the consent of the people. Mm. And if you withdraw your consent or you give notice and you tell them, this is where I draw the line. I can't speak for everybody else, but I can speak for myself and I can speak for my family. And I've drawn the line and I've given you notice. But there's a whole lot more to this. Mm. And it's also the last thing that I'm going to mention is knowing what is your property. I mean, if I say my property, a lot of people will say, yes, okay, that's your house and your car. It's a piece of land. But there's so much more to that because my property, <coughs> I'm going to read for you a segment that I've written as a, a um, commercial lien notice. And it says, everything I claim property to me, my right, uh, it's my children, my car, my house, all my property acquired by my time and sweat equity my tradable instruments, my intellectual property, my freedom of choice, my freedom of belief, my freedom of thought, my freedom to move freely, my freedom to self-determination, my dreams, my freedom to informed consent, my hopes. All of that are subsets of this thing called property. That's who you are. Mm. And you need to be able to know what am I going to do to protect my property? Because no other man or woman has the right to violate or cause damage or harm to my property. Because that's the foundational principle of natural law. 
you cause no damage, injury, loss or harm to a fellow man or woman. Yeah, I must say it's, uh, I do feel it's like um, the, one of the most important things in terms of, you know, the, the, so the lion symbology is sovereignty and courage and, you know, truth and, you know, power, those kinds of things, which I think we are all coming back to and really trying to under, understand in a stand. I know is, is one of the ways to speak about it in terms of natural law, um, sort of stand within around what is power really what is dominion really what is authority what is sovereignty all of that and i do think that it, you know this is just a little taste and i'm so grateful that you could come in and just give us a, a little thread because um when i did some work at the um in the middle of winter um around sort of sovereignty and this idea of the gold and the, the, the flow of sovereignty and the freedom and all of that coming back to the people. Um, the, the indication or the message was so strongly about find your sovereignty and understand what that means truly. And that that is our, our key to freedom. And I do you know, think that this work that you're doing and helping so many people with is like, it's 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 the it's one of the biggest keys so no, we, we, the, yeah the mess i think the mess that we find ourselves in are our own faults you know we we are to blame for this mess because we've taken essentially something which was a gift <laughs> which was a, a beautiful tremendous uh gift given at um, acts 126 now this is something that goes even further back it goes all the way back to 530 and even further back to the Phoenician times and and that acts 126 it's it's regarding dominion and authority and then when you go and look you'll actually trace that that acts 126 traces back to Genesis 126 and Genesis 126 is the beginning of it all when it says let us create man in our image and give him dominion and authority over the earth, over the animals on the earth, the fish in the sea and the birds in the air. And what we've done is we've given authority that was given to us. We've basically given away, given away to a system. Without realizing it. We've kind of forgotten realizing that it, we've yes. done that. And, it's not it just drains our energy, it drains that gift that was given to each individual. And it's basically realizing that and reclaiming that. So Eugene, I just um, wondered if before we end, because we've got another session starting soonish, but um, I'd love to hear, first of all, how if people wanted to learn more from you, um, is there a way that they can do that? Or more about the natural law process? Because I know <laughs> that there's a lot to learn. You know, there's uh, that. I think I learned about um, BB Rose. BB Backus is 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 that woman yes. who went to jail, and then she said she studied it for seven years or something, and sort of yes. took about seven years for her to really complete her understanding. You know, around it. So, um, I mean, I can send you my details, and if people want more uh, information, they're more than willing to. Uh, I, I prefer to sit on a one-on-one -on -one and not do like a, a group session because there's so much that needs to be shared as, as a holistic um, idea and then also to empower people so that they start to realize um, how to read, how to look at things, how to comprehend. Uh, you use the word inner standing. I like to use the word comprehension. Um, and, and what is the meaning of that comprehension? We know what understanding is now, and we know from the legal aspects what we're doing when we are understanding. Um, so none of us want to understand anymore. We, we, we sort of, we've reached that point, uh-uh, uh-uh, I, I don't understand, I don't understand. So <laughs> they can then contact me and we can rather sit one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I mean, I haven't been on this journey very long, although there are aspects and parts of this journey that's been going back 10 years now. Uh, but this specific part is going back 18 months and more in depth the last six months. And there's a lot of pitfalls and there's a lot of uh, fake bad stuff. Um, and I've sort of uh, put it together in a form 
that makes it uh, easy to comprehend, work with, but then also to empower the individual because, I mean, I'm not your source. I'm definitely not your source. You are your own source. You yeah. are your own master. You are, and then you need to learn how am I going to go about to put these things together so that I can stand in authority. I can stand as a lion. I can stand like David and I'm not fearful of this giant. I'm going out onto this battlefield. I've got my stones. I've got my slingshots and I'm ready. Absolutely. I can't give that. I can't give that to you. I can't give that to Andre. But I can sort of give you the tools to help you to progress to that point so that you can become a formidable foe, a formidable um, something to contend with. Mm. Um, I think you wanted Andre And it's to a journey. I would love it. I would love it, Andre. Um, just before we end, if, I'd love you to share a little bit of your story. I know that, um, you know, I don't mean to put pressure on you, but it'd be really nice. <laughs> these, these moments of courage, you know. Which story are you looking for? Whichever one you feel to share. So, well, I, I mean, I was thinking about the, the checkers, the checkers situation. <laughs> yeah. If well, look, for me, for me, it's it's been that way since the first uh, lockdown. I mean, from day one of lockdown, it's always been me just going about, um, you know, just the way I've always lived, you know, my own free will. And there have been a lot of blockages in the road, but as a, a sovereign person, I've always stood my ground and said, this is the way I'm going to live. And I don't consent to their regulations um, and, and so forth. So for me, it's just been, I've, I've just been able to, to voice myself and to stand my ground without backing down. Um, the beginning was terrible because, you know, you, you, you sort of have managers around you, staff around you, you've got security surrounding you. I would tremble at the beginning, but now it's just gone to a point where all of that's disappeared. Um, so I can say, you know, checkers before meeting up with Eugene and obviously with Eugene being able to gift me with, with all the information, um, I, I've, I've always just done it as almost what I'd call a loose cannon. Um, I'm now at a space where <laughs> Eugene is now assisting me and, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for that. But I guess I've just been one to stand in my own power. And how I actually met Eugene was at our last rally. And he was one of the people that actually stood up and said something against these people. And yes, I stood behind and I recorded, but this is where I saw true courage. And I was like, well, this is the person that I would always want to go to war with, basically. Um, and that's that's how I've connected with Eugene. But for me, it's just, it's been Andre living his life normally and just not being scared to, um, you know, even when, when things are thrown at you, not being scared to go head on and, and take it on, basically. And that's where I'm at now. Yeah, wow, what a time. I mean, we are slowly finding our way as we step into the fire. <laughs> Of, yeah. of of claiming back um, who we are. And so I just want to thank you so much, both of you, just everybody that's in this community that's that's making their contribution to helping us find our way back home. Back to truth. Absolutely. Yeah, real truth. All right, so we'll be in touch then in terms of how to get hold of you if people would like to and um do you want yeah, to... I'll, I'll post my i'll <coughs> post my email address and my okay. phone number great um and then yeah you can send me a message you can send me an email um I, there's lots of documents i can give but the problem is if you if you don't know from where it's coming if if, if you're not set and strong in yourself then you're going to look at the document and you're going to like what the hell is this uh th this sounds like alice in wonderland fairy tale you know um so th that's why i've actually got a process of not just giving out documents it's just laying the foundation 
and then then giving you the the tools so that you then can go forward and um, start to discover this exciting path. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm 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 all in. <laughs> I'm all in. It's wonderful. I'm going to put my details in the chat. Okay, great. Anybody that's interested. Thank you so much. All right, so we're going to close up now. Would anyone like to say anything before we end? Anybody that's in the in the chat? Let me just try and get this onto the group view somehow. Gallery. Anybody would like to say anything before we close? Roy. Here we are. Well, Eugene and Andre, oh, well, God bless you, Amanda. You've created an amazing basket of, I would say, transcendent paradigm shifting opportunities for everyone here today. But I would just like to greet Eugene and Andre as fellow warriors. Uh, I would look forward to sharing with you sometime, Eugene and Andre, my own sovereign, spontaneously God-inspired encounters and victories with the other side. <laughs> Sounds good. That would be amazing. We'll definitely yeah. do some follow-up work to, for sure. Amanda, there's, a, there's another opportunity for, for a Zoom meeting with you Absolutely. Uh, on this subject and that people can share anecdotal encounters and experiences, uh, either a negative or positive experience, but it's all accumulative and uh, really yeah. empowering for us. This is very, very novel and very innovative uh, kind of new work. I think, you know, we, we are stepping into a time of rewiring our brains, our minds mm. and finding a new, unlimited space for humble, God-blessed, loving empowerment. Thank you so yes. much. Uh, thank, if, you, if, thank you, everybody. Thanks so much. If, if you want to join in tonight um, at eight, we've got Sasha Stone talking and he, he was really, I think the person that turned me on to to the common law and natural law because it was very it's very much a part of what he teaches as well and he always says you know we are men and women of the living soil yeah. um living a, and having this conversation in our own in our free in our free right and so yeah please join us tonight if you'd like to and otherwise we'll find you again sometime soon amanda I would just like to say to everyone as well, please keep in mind, um, I have just been the person that has not been afraid to go and do all of these things, walk into the shops and refuse to wear masks. Eugene is the go-to guy. So if anything, you guys need to thank Eugene because I think he's doing a phenomenal job with what he's uh, giving to us as tools, obviously. And my only thing is stand in your power and stop being afraid no more of that that brings out your vibrations down it lowers you get out of that whole um fearful mm. that's what i would say but eugene is a gentleman to go to i'm just fortunate that he you know reached out to me and connected with me to say i can maybe guide you in a smooth sailing way versus your erratic up and down <laughs> that you've been doing so yeah. that's that's what I'd like to just say to everyone. Eugene is the go-to guy, and I'm I'm appreciative, and thank you for giving Eugene um, and I time to speak. Yeah, I can't wait for more. So we'll see you. We'll see you at some point in the future. Hundred percent. Thanks for the platform. And thank you so so much. Have a wonderful afternoon. 100%. Thanks. You as well. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.